Hi, I'm Jacqueline. One of my very favorite things to paint is an abstracted landscape. And today, I am gonna show you how to make an abstracted landscape with your gel press plate. So the paper I'm working on for this print is this American Masters um, printmaking paper, which is uh, made and marketed by Utrecht. As I'm putting this on, I'm concerned mostly about the top of the plate for coverage because the bottom will be covered up uh, with the mountains. We're gonna layer the colors on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and print this. So I've just got um, a light blue sky, that's all there is. So now the next print is actually going to be the sky. I think cobalt blue or thalo blue, one of the two, make the best looking skies. So now I've got some of the spider web stuff like you buy at Halloween and I'm going to use it to make some clouds in the sky. I mean, I've pulled it apart and made it really wispy so it was more cloud-like. So I'm ready to print. And with the Baron, I try to go do circular strokes. And I try to go over everything at least twice. I'm putting more pressure on the area where I think the clouds are because that's going to be a little bit harder to print. Okay, let's see what we got here. Oh, yeah, that worked pretty well. So I've got a piece of just plain old copier paper here and I'm going to tear a mask for the mountains and you have to kind of think in the opposite way because we're going to build this from the top mountain to the lowest mountain. Um, kind of kind of look at my print here to see, um, I want the mountain to come up to about here where it's going to nip the clouds a little bit. make them too sharp at the top. These are more like the Appalachian Mountains and not the Rockies because um, they're green all the way up. And those are a softer mountain range. You can always sketch this out first if you want and try to tear along the line. And this green that we're going to use is a lighter color. So this is the one I don't want to use. This is the one I am going to use. We're going to mask off the top. Okay, and so for my color green, I have um, phthalo green blue shade and um, some quinacridone nickel azo gold in it. And um, also some cad yellow light and just a teeny touch of red, like a pea-sized piece of red. And that was just to keep it from being so bright and artificial looking. It kind of made it, by adding the color complement, it made it a little earthier. Okay, and I'm going to line this up with the top of the plate. Yes, and it just nips that cloud a little bit, so um, makes it feel like the cloud is grounded a bit. It's not so... Um, just hanging out up there all by itself. So I'm going to tear the mask, and I've got the print over here for reference. Um, I want to see where my mountains are. I'm just going to make a mark about where I want these to start. I was going to try to make these a little bit more like rolling hills not have as sharp a peaks on this one. So yes, that will work. 
Okay, so for this layer, we're using Sap Green U, and it's in addition to being mixed with the open gel, it also has just a little bit of um, quinacridone um, nickel azo gold in it. I wanted this one to be darker and a little earthier because the sun's not shining on it. And when the sun shines on stuff, it, it looks brighter. So I wanted that top mountain range to look brighter than this one. Okay, and I'm going to line it up on the top of the plate again. And print. So yeah, that's looking better. For this layer, I want it to look like there's some vegetation growing on the ground or something. So I found this fuzzy yarn uh, in my studio and I thought, well, that could look like grass. So the colors I've got for this layer are, uh, again, Sap Green U and I have mixed it almost equal parts of sap green U and um, raw sienna and that makes it very uh, brownish. Okay so I've got these little bitty pieces of the yarn here and I'm just gonna sit them down let them fall naturally. I'm not gonna try to control it in any way. to look like some brush or grass, weeds, just that there's something growing. There, that should do it. And now I need another mask. Okay, I've sketched this out and um, the sketching I'm finding as I'm going here is really helping me with the registration um, because I can put it the, this at the top, put the top of this at the top of the print and draw it where I want it. So these are lower hills, not as many peaks. Okay. Lining it up with the top of the plate. Okay, that looks great. So here is the final print. Um, I'm going to zoom in here so that you can see um, that grass at the bottom made by the yarn. I think it looks great. And of course, the green underneath from the previous uh, screen, the previous printing, uh, shows through. You can see here, you can see the three different colors of green. Um, they're subtle. Um, when you, if you see it in person, it um, there's enough difference. There's enough contrast between the greens um, to make it work. So um, I'm really happy with it. Playing with these masks for a while now, and this one is the best. Have a great time making monoprints with your gel press plate, and thank you so much for watching today. Mm -hmm.